Salam alaikum. Welcome back to Jim's. My name is Melissa Mitchell from here in Australia from Abundant Life Studio. And today I'm quite interested to react to this one. How Islam began in 10 minutes. So, uh, yeah, I'm looking. It's actually the video goes for about eight minutes. So it's actually in under 10 minutes. Uh, the channel is True Tube. And uh, yeah, they have 150,000 subscribers. So that is a lot. And this video has 13 million views, which is really awesome. I'm quite interested to, to watch this um, so that I can understand more about Islam and its beginning. So before we get started, make sure you hit that subscription button, let your friends know about gyms, and of course, um, leave a thumbs up if you like this reaction and if you um, uh, like to leave a comment as well about what you thought of the video too. So I'm going to push play and we'll get started and I'll give you my feedback at the end. How Islam began in 10 minutes. Here we go. How Islam began in under 10 minutes. Not a problem. We've started. Okay, so travel back in time with me to a land far, far away a long, long ago. Mecca and Arabia, about the year 570. Wow. Mecca is important for two reasons. One, the Kaaba is there an ancient temple built to worship God. And two, Muhammad, peace be upon him, was born in Mecca. Now, problem, I can't show you Muhammad because it wouldn't be right. I'll tell you why in a bit. But in the meantime, here's his name in Arabic. Nice. It's lovely. Back in the day, Mecca was a lawless place. The only way to be safe was to have backup. Lots of rich big brothers who'd beat up anyone who got in your way. So the place was ruled by the most powerful families who could do pretty much what they wanted. And religion didn't help. By this time, the Kaaba had been filled to overflowing with 360 idols that did nothing to help anyone. So it was a tough place to grow up. If, like Muhammad, you were a poor orphan and believed in just one God you couldn't see, like the Jews and the Christians, he called him Allah, the God, in Arabic there. Muhammad's dad died before he was even born, and his mum died when he was just six. So he was brought up by his grandfather, Abdul Muttalib, and then, when he died too, by his uncle, Abu Talib, who had the respect of the city's ruling families, so Muhammad was safe for the time being. Muhammad started out as a shepherd and then became a businessman traveling about buying and selling stuff for rich clients. When he did some work for a rich widow called Khadija, she was so impressed by his honesty and skill that they ended up getting married. And for a while, it looked like Muhammad was going places. Well, he was, but not how you think. Every year in the month of Ramadan, different calendar, different names for the months, there was a big party around the Kaaba. When people made sacrifices to the idols, Muhammad hated it, so he'd get out of town and sleep in a cave he'd found on top of a nearby mountain. One night, Muhammad's praying to Allah when wham! There's the angel Jibreel, you might say Gabriel, standing right in front of him. Read, says the angel, but Muhammad couldn't read. No schools, you see. Jibreel keeps on at him. Three times he says, read. Then he grabs hold of Muhammad and wham! Again, it's like Muhammad's learned the words off by heart. So he recites the message out loud. Read in the name of your Lord, who created man from a drop of blood. Read, for your Lord is most generous. He who taught by the pen, taught man what he did not know. It was a message from Allah. God was speaking to him, just like he'd spoken to the prophets in the Jewish and Christian holy books, which meant he was a prophet too. The messages continued for the rest of Muhammad's life. Allah gave him the words to say and the Prophet recited them. The words were written down by his friends and years later they were collected together and became the Muslim holy book, the Quran, which means recitation, because Muhammad recited it, you see? Anyway, that was much later, so back to the night of power. Muhammad tells his family, then his friends, and eventually everyone about Allah that he's a one and only God, that he wants everyone to be treated fairly, and long story short, it didn't go down well with the ruling families of Mecca, who liked things just the way they were, thank you very much. You see, Islam means obedience to Allah, and Muslim means someone who obeys Allah, and the ruling families didn't want anyone obeying anyone else but them. So the people who believed in Muhammad's message, the Muslims, were given a hard time. Some were even tortured and killed, a few of them managed to escape to Abyssinia, Ethiopia. But most were stuck in Mecca. Muhammad also had to cope with the death of his wife. And then just a few weeks later, his uncle too. Feeling very down, he went to the Kaaba to pray to Allah one night. 
Then, the weirdest thing happened. Jibreel turns up, sits him on a winged horse called al Borak, and flies him all the way from Mecca to Jerusalem. He prays with all the prophets who have ever lived. Then, he's taken up to the heavens to chat with some of the prophets, and then into paradise itself, where Allah tells Muhammad to pray five times a day and to stay strong. He's returned to Jerusalem, and then flies back to the Kaaba in Mecca. We call it the night journey, and Muslims still argue whether it was a real experience or a vision, but whatever, it gave Muhammad a much needed boost, and just as well, because there were more tough times ahead. So, there was this other city called Yathrib, the people there heard about Muhammad and his message and invited him and his followers to join them. A few at a time, the Muslims left Mecca and made a dangerous journey across the desert to Yathrib. It's known as a hijra, which means migration, you know, like birds do. Muhammad and a few of his friends stayed in Mecca until everyone had got away and then made plans for their own escape. But the ruling families wanted to kill Muhammad while they still could. So seven sons, one from each family, were sent in the middle of the night to stab the Prophet while he slept. But he was way ahead of them. And when they burst into the house, Muhammad was gone. Trackers were sent out to hunt him down. Muhammad and his best friend Abu Bakr took a roundabout route to try and shake off the pursuit. But the trackers were too good and slowly gained on them. So Muhammad and Abu Bakr hid in a cave and prayed that no one found them. The trackers found the cave all right, but they didn't bother going in to search. There was no way Muhammad could be inside, they thought. There was a spider's web over the mouth of the cave and a nesting bird at the entrance. He must have given them the slip. So off they went, leaving Muhammad and Abu Bakr protected by a spider and a bird. <laughs> Muhammad made it safely to Yathrib, which was renamed Medina al Nabi, the city of the Prophet, but most people just call it Medina. But Muhammad's worries weren't over yet. There were three big battles between the Muslims and the Meccans. First, the Battle of Badr, when Muhammad and just 313 men faced 1,000 Meccan soldiers. Miraculously, the Muslims won. Then, there was the Battle of Uhud, which didn't go so well. Some of Muhammad's men disobeyed his orders and ran off during the battle to raid the Meccans' camp, and so the Muslims were outmaneuvered. Then, there was the Battle of the Trent. Medina was protected on three sides by mountains, so when the Meccan forces advanced in the city, the Muslims just dug a deep trench. The Meccans made camp, but the weather was terrible. Pouring rain put out their fires and howling winds blew down their tents. Eventually, they gave up and went back to Mecca. It was all a bit embarrassing. They were losing the respect of the local tribes who were flocking to join the Muslims. So a peace treaty was signed at Hudaybiyah. But it wasn't long before the Meccans broke it. Muhammad decided that enough was enough. By now he had over 10,000 men, so he led them across the desert to Mecca. The ruling families realised they'd made a huge mistake, but it was too late. All they could do was surrender and hope that the Muslim army killed them quickly. But Muhammad said there should be no more fighting. He rode into Mecca and went straight to the Kaaba. He circled it seven times anti-clockwise and smashed all the idols rededicating the Kaaba to Allah. And that's why I'm not going to show you Muhammad. The Muslims wanted to make it totally clear that they only worship the one unseen God. So they didn't have any pictures of Muhammad in case anyone thought he was an idol. And they didn't have any pictures of Allah because he's like nothing on earth. So it would be impossible to draw him anyway. So there you go. How Islam began in under 10 minutes. How did I do? Hmm, that was really cool. I really liked that, that she presented that very well. Her voice was very engaging. I found it really intriguing. I loved that it was uh, the graphics of it for someone like me to be able to watch that and it, it gave me a really good sense of the beginnings and I really, really enjoyed that. Um, it was interesting seeing about Medina and Mecca because having lived in Dubai and I used to you know work for an airline and I flew into Mecca and I used to fly into Saudi and and you know around that region um it was quite interesting to hear about Mecca from the beginning um because I used to fly and work on the Hajj flights uh which were always very you know busy flights and you know bringing the people in and everything it was amazing experience to go and and um to, to, to bring them in 
and for the pilgrimage. So that that was really interesting. I loved the way she spoke. I think she was very engaging. I think it was a very well told story. The story was conveyed very well and it kept me really engaged. So I'm going to give like four, I've only got two thumbs, but four fingers up for that one. Really good true tube. Well done. How Islam began in 10 minutes and it was actually under 10 minutes. So that's really cool. Let us know in the comments what you thought of this, if you enjoyed it. And of course, give us a thumbs up, leave us a comment, as I said, and subscribe, share this channel with your friends as well. And uh, if you are on Facebook and Instagram, head over and follow Jim's Reaction TV on there too. So until next time, my name is Melissa Mitchell from here in Australia uh, from Abundant Life uh, Studio and you're watching Jim's. We'll see you then.